So we're going to revisit particle motion. Uh, so your velocity and acceleration, but from the perspective of an integral. So I have a few pieces of vocabulary that we're just going to kind of write off to the side here before we start. I can just fit them in here. Um, first, displacement. Displacement is where you started to where you ended up. Uh, and so that is going to be your integral from A to B of velocity. So displacement is like if I got up from my chair right now and you know ran up the street and back and got straight back in my chair, my displacement is actually zero. I ended up exactly where I started. Um, you know, you started and ended the same place. So it's where you started to where you ended up. A lot of things could have happened in between, but displacement is just like from the beginning to the end, where'd you start, where'd you end up? So if that is total distance, which is going to be integral from A to B and then absolute value of velocity. So if I got up out of my chair and ran up the street and back and got back in my chair, my displacement would be nothing because I ended up where I started. But my total distance would actually be quite a lot because I ran up the street and back. Um, so displacement is just your integral of velocity, total distance, you put an absolute value around it. And then position. Um, that's, you know, where you are, like if you want to find out where you're at, it is the initial condition plus displacement, which I hope makes sense. If you want to find out where you are, you take where you started plus whatever your displacement was. And again, like I said, I I'm putting like vocabulary to this, but it's not any different than what we did. And let me pull out the homework again here. This one with the, the water that we did in the homework, we started out with 48 gallons. That was the initial condition. And then we added on, this is displacement. It was, you know, the water, rate of water coming in and then minus rate of water going out. You know, so, you know, I'm putting words to this, but you've already done it. So don't, don't let the words overwhelm you because it's not any different than what we've done before. All right, so we're just gonna practice a few of these. Number one, the table below gives the values of velocity and acceleration of a particle moving in. And I made this up just to be silly because we, we do so many that are just feet per second. People get so used to feet per second. So I made this one nanometers and decades. So I don't know what this particle is, but I guess it's like a glacier. Remember, a particle is anything with motion. It's not like a dust speck. Your particle could be um, a bus or a car or a person or a cloud, You know, anything that has motion, right? So this is in nanometers per decade. Um, velocity and acceleration are differential. That just means there's no issues with them. Um, velocity is decreasing for all of these values, which you can see is going down. Um, we're going to use the data to answer the questions. So here we go. Letter A. Use a left Riemann sum to approximate integral from 0 to 10 of velocity. Show the computations. They put that on the AP exam. That just means, you know, show what all you added together. And you don't even have to simplify it. Um, and then we're going to explain what it means. When you do an explanation, you need to use units. So make sure you include the units in there. All right, so let's do left room on sum. It's been a minute since we've done these. First sub interval from zero to two. So that is a distance of two. I guess I shouldn't say distance, but time, time of you know two, two decades. All right, and then it says a left room on sum. So I'm going to pick the number on the left, which is five. And I'm using velocity because that's what's in the interval. All right, next sub interval. Um, how long is this sub interval, guys? I'm gonna throw some questions at you because it's been a while since we've done these. I wanna make sure we remember it. What is our next sub interval? Good, four, perfect. All right, and then the number on the left? So I'm getting twos and threes. You want this to be velocity. Velocity is what's in the integral. So yeah, it is gonna be three. It's this number right here. You want the velocity. So like if we're looking at this as our sub interval, the number on the left is the three. All right, let's try it again. Next sub interval. What is our next sub interval? Okay, good, cool, four. And then the number on the left for velocity. 
is good, negative one. All right, and you do not need to add that all up. Just leave it alone. And on the AP exam as well, just leave it alone. Now there should be units at the end, um, but we're gonna write an explanation and I'm gonna include the units in that anyway. As long as you put the units somewhere, then you're good. All right, so based on what I just told you up here, is this displacement or is it total distance? What we just did right here. Is it displacement or is it total distance? And good, it is displacement. There's not an absolute value on it. So this is displacement in nanometers. from zero to 10, those are our boundaries, decades. And that's how you have to say that. Um, you have to mention the nanometers and the decades. You have to mention all the units. It's displacement in nanometers from zero to 10 decades. Um, you have to mention from when to when or they will not give you credit for it. All right, letter B, is that approximation that we just found greater than or less than? So is this an overestimate or an underestimate? of the actual value, explain your reasoning. All right, we've done this before too. Velocity is decreasing. Remember I said, just put your pencil on your paper like this. Look, it's something that is decreasing and we did a left sum. So, hey guys, is it over or is it under? If the function is decreasing and we take the left side, is it gonna be over or is it gonna be under? Good, nice job guys, over. All right, because that's the side that's higher up. So overestimate because velocity is decreasing and this is a left sum. Right, again, that's review. We've done that before. All right, let us see. Approximate the value of, okay, now this one has an absolute value. That means any number up there that's negative, we're going to treat it like it's positive, right? And this one says trapezoidal approximation. Um, and we're gonna have to do all of the trapezoids separately because the subintervals are not all the same length. Let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see the chart and what I'm writing at the same time. All right, so first trapezoid, one half times the height, that's the length of the subinterval. So zero to two is two. And then you add the bases together. So five plus three. So that's the first one. All right, and then the second one, a half, and then from two to six is four, and then we're gonna add the bases together. Now, again, it's absolute value. So I'm gonna treat this one like a positive one. That negative one, I'm gonna treat it like a positive one. So three plus one. All right, and then the last one, one half times um, from six to 10 is four, and then add the bases together. Again, treat them both like they're positive. So one plus eight. And again, there should be units at the end of that, but I'm gonna put the units in the explanation. Um, so as long as you put them somewhere, it's good. And it's gonna be almost the exact same sentence that we just did here. Um, what is the only difference? Because it, it is gonna be this sentence over again, just with one change. What's the one thing I'm gonna change about that statement? And yeah, good. It just, instead of displacement, it's gonna to be total distance because of the absolute value. So this is total distance in nanometers from zero to 10 decades. All right, and then letter D, determine the value of, now this is integral of acceleration. So if we integrate acceleration, that's gonna take us back to velocity and then such that zero to 10. So let me review this. It's worth taking the time to go over, right? You have position, which would be something like feet. I'm just gonna make up some units. And then you have velocity, which would be feet per second. And then you have acceleration, which would be feet per second squared. So to get from position to velocity, you do a derivative. To get from velocity to acceleration, you do a derivative. But when you go backwards, you do an integral. 
Does this help? I hope it does. So to get from position to velocity, you do a derivative. To get from velocity to acceleration, you do a derivative. But if you want to go backwards, you're doing an integral. So this was integral of acceleration that takes us back to velocity. And it's such that 0 to 10. So upper boundary minus lower boundary. We're going to do v of 10 minus v of 0. And I'm just going to get those values uh, from the table. So velocity at 10 is negative 8. And then velocity at 0 is 5. So we're going to have negative 8 minus 5. And so that's going to be negative 13. Now, this again says explain the meaning. So we're going to have to write a sentence here. Now, we evaluated velocity. That's a rate, something per something else. So it's nanometers per decade. And what happened to the velocity over this time interval? Did it increase or did it decrease? Well, this is negative. So what do you guys think? Did the velocity go up over that time or did it go down? Yeah, good. It decreased. The velocity was um, five. Then it went down to negative eight. So not as this, not only is this thing moving at a glacial pace, it's nanometers per decade, it's also slowing down. Right. So here's your explanation. The velocity decreased 13 nanometers per decade from zero to 10 decades. Now notice I didn't put a negative there because I said decrease. The decrease takes care of the fact that it's negative. Yeah, even glaciers move like a tiny little bit. Yeah, well, I just made up different units. We just do so much with feet per second and people get locked into that feet per second. And I was like, I wanna make up a problem that has like something that's not feet per second. So I did it just to be silly, right? The velocity decreased 13 nanometers per decade from zero to 10 decades. All right, so other side. Now this one, instead of a table, we're given um, a graph. So we're going to need to find all the areas of these shapes. See how slow that is? Yeah, don't think about it too hard. I just changed the units so we could do something different. Because when you do so many problems that are feet per second, um, and then if it changes, people don't even read the question. They'll just put feet per second. And I just wanted my students not to get locked into that. Like, make sure you actually read the question, because it might not always be feet per second. All right, so this is the graph showing velocity of a particle moving from zero to 11. Now this one doesn't even actually have units because all we have is this graph. So if there aren't units, don't make them up. Just don't put anything. Right, so let's find the areas of these shapes. Here we have a semicircle that's one half pi r squared. And the radius of that is two. So that is gonna be worth two pi. And then I have this triangle. So one half base times height. Let's see, the base is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the height is uh, also six. So that is going to be 18. Um, but it is below sea level, so negative. So negative 18. And then I've got this last little triangle here. Again, one half base times height. And so that's three halves, which would be one and a half. We have all our areas, we're ready to go. Letter A, find the total distance traveled by the particle from zero to 11. So that is gonna be integral zero to 11, absolute value of velocity. So total distance means we wanna absolute value that. So we're gonna add together all of these areas but we're gonna treat them like they're all positive. So we're just gonna treat them like they're all positive. So it'll be two pi plus, um, and then pretend this is a positive 18 plus one and a half. So that would be plus 19 and a half. And again, there are no units on this, so you don't have to put them, but if there were, it would be like nanometers or feet or miles or meters or yards or whatever have you. All right, letter B. Find the value of, and that's 0 to 11, but there's not an absolute value. So I'm just going to add all these up you know, as they are. So it would be 2 pi and then negative 18 
plus positive one and a half. So it'd be minus 16 and a half. And then we're gonna explain what that means in the context of the problem. Now there's no units, so there's actually not very much context, but this would be displacement from zero to 11. And again, if there were units, it would be displacement in yards or whatever from zero to 11 seconds or minutes. You know, This would be your, your distance unit and then the zero to 11 would be your time unit um, if they were on there. All right, let us see. If the initial position of the particle is X is zero equals two. So you have the, the time starting at zero and the position starting at two, then find the position at time 11. So you would take your initial condition, which is two, plus the displacement from zero to 11. Now be careful, because they don't always start this at zero. It could have been somewhere else, and then you would start your accumulation. Like what if they said four? Then you would start your accumulation at four. Um, so you just be careful, it's not always zero. You just have to go with whatever's written there. All right, so this is gonna be two plus, and then we found the displacement right here. So two pi minus 16 and a half. And so that would be two pi minus 14 and a half. All right, do you guys want a break or do you want me to just keep on going and finish the last one? Are you guys fading out on me? Do you need another break or do you want me to just go ahead and finish? What do you guys want? We'll just finish up, okay. Yeah, the notes aren't long today. So we'll finish and then we can, we can be done early. That'll be good. All right, you are gonna need your calculator for this and please button push along with me because there's one almost exactly like this on your test. Um, like I literally just changed the numbers in the problem, okay? So the rate of change, and that's a, a rate, so it's something per something else, kilometers per hour at the altitude of a hot air balloon is given by this times zero to four. Um, time is in hours, obviously it said kilometers per hour there. Assume the balloon is initially at ground level. We'll go ahead and type this in, we'll take a peek at it. So everybody go to Y equals and type this in. So X squared times four X squared plus and then you want your window to be zero to four. So go to window and make your X's, oh, well, this is very crazy here, zero to four. I'm gonna change my Y back to standard, negative 10 to 10. Um, if I need to change that, I can. I actually don't know if that'll be good or not. We'll have to see. But the X's need to be zero to four. That's the time window we were given. All right, so that looks pretty good. I can see everything, okay. Now here's what I normally get is people, I'm like, where did the balloon start? And people are like up in the air. And I'm like, no, this is not the position. What does this mean that the balloon was underground? No, this is not position and this is not the ground. This is a velocity. This is a rate of change, okay? Um, hey guys, where was the balloon initially? Where did the balloon start out? Because it says it in the problem. It, good, zero, on the ground. It started on the ground. Good, perfect, but moving up. So see all this positive area? That means the balloon went up, which is good, because if it started on the ground, it can't go down, all right? So the balloon started on the ground. It went up for all this positive area. This is positive accumulation. And then it went down, so all of this is negative accumulation. And then it went back up. We actually did this problem earlier this year. We're just revisiting it from the integration standpoint. And I asked you guys this question then, and I'm gonna ask it again. Did you exit the balloon at the end of these four hours? Yes or no, what do you think? Can you get out of the balloon at time four hours? Or should you, I guess is the question. No, you shouldn't unless you have a parachute or wings. The balloon went up. It's not on the ground, it's up in the air. You do not wanna exit the ride. Okay, good, so you understand what's going on. It starts on the ground, goes up, goes down, goes back up. Letter A, when, oh wait, was the initial condition? Oh, it was initially on the ground, duh, I already said that. All right, when is the balloon closest to the ground? That's a minimum. 
Uh, during the time interval two to four, and then there's a follow-up question, right? When is the balloon closest to the ground? Minimum means your derivative changed from negative to positive. So yeah, right about 3.5. Now it's not exactly 3.5. We're gonna have to make the calculator find that for us. It's gonna be like a crazy decimal. But yes, right here, it's where the derivative changes from negative to positive. Minimum means derivative goes from negative to positive. So that's right here, below to above. Oh, sorry, make sure you guys can see that. So we are going to calculate this. Um, so second case, we want to calculate a zero. So choice number two. Now it's gonna ask you left bound, right bound guess. Three and a half was a really good guess. So let's make our left bound three and two. I just type them manually. I don't like moving the cursor. I think that's annoying. Right bound, I'm gonna do four enter. And then guess, I'm gonna do 3.5, enter. And it will come up, it's right here, 3.514, make sure you do three decimal points, 3.514 hours. So when is the balloon closest to the ground? So I guess if you were gonna jump out, 3.514 hours is the best time to do it because that's when you were closest to the ground. Now, it's still not a good idea, but I'm just saying, if you were gonna try and jump out, that's when you'd wanna do it. All right, now the follow-up question, what is the altitude of the balloon at this time? You take the initial condition, which in this case was zero, but I'm still gonna write it just so that you know, if there was an initial condition, it would go right there. I just, someone asked, it, do we stop at three decimal points? I do. Um, you can round, but I feel like that's extra brain power that you don't need to use. I just do the first three that you see, it's called truncating. So just take the first three that you see and you don't even have to think about it or worry about it any further. So I think that's, that's the fastest, easiest way to do that. And this follow-up question is where is the balloon? So it's the initial condition, which again, in this case it's zero, but I'm still writing it because if there was one, that's where it would go. And so I want you to understand that's where it would go. So initial condition plus the displacement. Um, and so we want it to be from zero to that time. So I'm gonna store that and I'll show you how in a second, but we did it last class, right? I'm gonna store that um, and then velocity, uh, which they didn't call V, it's R, it's R for rate. But anyway, that function is what's gonna go in there. And that will tell us where the balloon is. So it's where it started plus the displacement. So if you want to um, store this, you're gonna quit out of there, go to the home screen, hit X, Enter. I hope you guys are following along with me. I can't see you, so I can't make sure, but you're going to have to be able to do this on your test. Like, you won't, you'll get them all wrong if you can't type any of this in on your test. Hit X, enter, and then store it. Store alpha A, enter. If you don't store it and you just type 3.514, your answer is not going to be accurate to three places. And they won't give you credit on the AP exam. Like they'll actually give you nothing. I'll give you partial credit because I'm nice, but they'll give you nothing, right? So make sure you're storing it. So X enter, store it. And then um, I'm not gonna type zero plus because that's just nothing. But we're gonna do the integral from zero to A. And then um, this is the rate function right here. So X to the third minus four X squared plus six the X. And that will tell us where the balloon is at that time. And so it is 1.348 kilometers in the air. So yeah, I still don't recommend jumping out. So 1.348. So you are not allowed to reuse a decimal that has been rounded or truncated. You can only round or truncate your final answer. You are not allowed to round or truncate before you get there. It's like playing the telephone game. Like when you, you recopy that answer, it's like, you know what I'm talking about with the telephone game? Like you whisper something to someone, they whisper it to someone else and then someone else and it gets diluted, you know, as it goes on. That's like what you're doing with your answers. You can't round or truncate. Like you can't chop it off until you get to the very end, like your last step. Is that making sense? Because otherwise, like when you copy it along, you've lost part of the answer. So like if I just typed 3.514 here, 
I lost all the rest of the decimal points. So when I get this final answer, it's not going to be accurate enough. Is that, do I need to, if I don't get a, okay, we got it, I tend to just keep on rambling, All right, You have to, you have to store them. You can only, you can only round or truncate for the final answer. Here, I'll show you. Let me go back and get this and bring it down. If I change this to 3.514. Okay, see this might actually end up being okay. All right, so this was a bad example. But sometimes if you go and change that, say this was um, 0.346, like it would be off by just enough that they would not give you credit. Like they would give you zero. So you have to store it. Um, if it's this one, it just so happens to like be accurate to three places. But if it's if it's not, they'll give you zero. They will give you nothing. All right, we gotta move on here. All right, find the value of integral zero to four r of t dt and explain what it means include units. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I don't wanna type this over again. So I'm just gonna go bring it back and I'm gonna change this to a four. Let me delete all that and change it to a four. Yeah, they give you no margin, nothing. If it's, if it's off by like the third decimal point, they will give you zero. Like no partial credit, they'll give you nothing. This, I'm, I'm the messenger, <laughs> okay? All right, so this is zero to four of all of that. I'm gonna hit enter. So there's the answer, two point, uh, now I will round this one. We'll say 2.667, because I don't, I'm gonna put 666 on here. All right, so 2.667, and then we're gonna explain what that means. Um, so, hey guys, is it displacement or is it total distance? Good, displacement. There's not an absolute value. Good, nice job, perfect. All right, so this is displacement in kilometers from zero to four hours. You can also say something like, if you wanna be like a little bit more, if you're more of like an English person than a math person and you wanna like write a story, you could say the balloon went up 2.66 kilometers from zero to four hours. It was its displacement. So it started out lower and then it, it ended up 2.667 uh, kilometers higher. Oh, don't worry about spelling. I'm like the worst speller in the world. So no worries. I right, know this is the same thing, but we wanna do absolute value. Unfortunately, you cannot just go back up and bring this back and do the absolute value. You can't like shimmy an absolute value in there. So we're gonna have to um, start all over. So it is uh, integral zero to four. Now your absolute value is in your math menu. So you would hit math and then um, go over to numbers. It's up there at the top. So math numbers and then abs for absolute value. I think there's another way you can get it. I think through the catalog. I've just always done it that way. Um, but however you wanna get your absolute value and then we're gonna type the question in. And this sometimes takes a minute if you hit enter here, when you do the absolute value, sometimes it has to think about it for a little bit. Um, don't hit any buttons while it's doing that. You don't want to mess it up. Um, it's just, you're asking it to work really hard. I got a bigger number than I did for this one. Does that make sense? Like, why is this result bigger than the result I got in part B? Yeah, good, you're not subtracting the negatives. For displacement, you're adding the positives and subtracting the negatives. For absolute value, this is total distance, all the negative stuff counts positively. So you're adding everything together, right? And so this is almost the exact same statement except total distance. So total distance in kilometers from zero to four hours. All right, and the last one. Uh, when is the balloon at its maximum altitude? Okay, so maximum, um, that is where your derivative changes from positive to negative. So I'm gonna bring the graph back up here. So we want um, derivative changing from positive to negative, which is gonna be right about there. So about one and a half. Now you can't just call it one and a half, you have to calculate it. So we're gonna do second trace. We want a zero. 
It's gonna ask me left bound, right bound, guess. So since it's about one and a half, I'm gonna make my left bound one enter, my right bound two enter, and then my guess one and a half enter. So I got 1.571, again, I'm just taking the first three decimal points. So 1.571 hours. And they're doing the exact same follow-up question that we had in part A. Um, what is the altitude of the balloon? So I'm gonna store this as A. So let me quit out of here. I'm gonna bring it back, X enter, and then store alpha A enter. So X enter brings it back, store alpha A enter. And then where is the balloon? Well, it's the initial condition, which again, in this case, in this case is zero, plus, the displacement. All right, so I'm gonna do the integral from zero to A and then type this again. Oh, I guess I could have hit up and brought it back. Oh, well, I'm already typing it, so I'll just type it all again. Um, I could have just hit the up arrow until I got back to it, brought it back and then changed that to A, um, but oh, well, I typed it again. It wasn't a long uh, equation. All right, so I got 5.779 kilometers. That is its maximum altitude during that time interval. 